Hello guys and welcome back again to another amazing episode and this is the diaspora transition episode where we interview people who move back from the diaspora and currently living on the continent even doing business and uh, today I have here someone very special she goes by the name Portia she's moved from Canada and currently here in Ghana when it comes to fashion you know she's there modeling she's there managing restaurants and so many things she's doing here on the continent and I want to have a quick conversation with her Ask her why did she even decide to leave the paradise, the so-called paradise, I mean, Canada to come to Ghana, you know. So without further ado, Portia, welcome on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for honoring my invitation to be on the show. Uh, people are watching you for the first time. Before I ask mm -hmm. you my first question, briefly introduce yourself to people watching you for the first time. Okay, so I am Portia Ghana. Last name is G-A-N-A. -A. People think it's fake, but it's a real name, Portia Ghana. Um, I am a travel enthusiast, model, writer, actor. I'm uh, in the fashion and entertainment industry, basically. So everything that is around that, I do it. I have an online clothing store. And one of my major things is my NGO, uh, self-titled Pusha Ghana Foundation. And our current main uh, things are pure poverty. Um, so I... I delve in a lot of things i guess you can call me a serial entrepreneur maybe serial entrepreneur. yeah wow. so that's that's me i do everything i'm like an olivia pope sort of in ghana i like yeah. that that's a powerful woman you're doing so many things <laughs> right before i ask my next question where we are currently filming is called bureau bureau is a co-working space you've moved from the uk us you want a very nice environment with high-speed wi-fi good environment serene to work without no interruption, no Wi-Fi, you know, getting cut or even the network, uh, the lights going off and on, here's a place for you to work. Now, Portia, let me ask you this, right? Why Ghana? Well, I'm originally from Ghana, mm -hmm. so maybe I have a bias or not really. Uh, let me see. Why Ghana? Mm -hmm. um, it just happened accidentally on purpose. Really? I came, I came, uh, in 2011 for a few weeks and i just felt like i needed to be back here i felt like i needed to move here um there's just a little this is a little bug that gets a hold of you when you come to ghana that makes you want to stay here so i think everybody gets that feeling when that happens now, did you move back and forth, maybe come for holidays uh, before you decided to stay here permanently, uh, permanently or? or? Um, I, when I came back in 2011, just for a few weeks, um, when I went back, I then started to think about, okay, I need to come back. So I, I came back a few times. I came back in 2015. It was only supposed to be for like a month. I stayed for almost a year. Then I went. Then I came back in 2017 for about five months mm -hmm. or four months. Mm -hmm. Then I went back. And then I came again in 2019. Okay. And year for 10. Yeah, I was I was also here in 2018 for a few months, okay. and then I came back in 2019, and and COVID happened, and so I just stayed. Wow! So COVID forced you to stay in Ghana. <laughs> yeah, because I was supposed to go back in the summer. Like I was gonna be bi coastal. I'd be mm -hmm. here. I'd go back in the summer. I'd come back. But yeah, when COVID happened, I just stayed, and I haven't stay. been back since. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What was the scenario like? You moved alone by yourself or you were with family, you were... Uh, well, I moved alone, but like my parents happened to move back sort of around the same time as okay. me as well. Okay. Um, so it, it kind of, uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I pushed them to move back. Like I was telling them, I kept going back to Canada and be like, yo, like, Ghana is not what you remember from 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Move back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Start wow. your move back plan. So I, I've been, like, because of me, a bunch of people have actually moved here. Because really? I keep telling them, move here. Let's move here. It. So you convince your mom, your, your dad, yeah. and then a bunch of other friends to move to the continent. What yes. did you see here that made you that confidence to tell people to move here? Because Ghana is a land of milk and honey. It's a land really? of opportunity. <laughs> there is nothing here. So... 
anything you want to do, mm -hmm. you can be the first, the first person to okay. do it and like jump in. Wow. And because everything's already been done mm -hmm. in the West. So there's already like an infrastructure. There's already a setup for things. The most basic things. Mm -hmm. If you have the right um, funding and you know how to mold it to the nuances and mm -hmm. issues of Ghana, yeah. then you'll succeed. Really? Yeah. Wow. You know, from coming from your perspective, you live in Canada, so I think you, you clearly see very different. But on the other hand, Ghanaians living on the continent would say they think they would probably succeed more when they go to Canada or where you came from. Yeah. Why, why do you think that is though? I think it's because they have been unfortunate enough to live without structure they mm -hmm. haven't experienced the outside structure mm -hmm. so they're wanting to go there and everybody wants what they don't have everybody right. wants to everybody here wants to go there but there wants to come here because you don't really value what you have where you are mm -hmm. um so in and when i'm saying like oh people can bring the things from over there and bring it here like the average Ghanaian hasn't experienced how something is supposed to be smoothly so they can't so they're a little bit stuck in mm -hmm. the system of doing the chaos that they mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um, so when it's not until they go out see how uh, something is that they'll be like okay then they want to bring it back here okay so until they do that they'll be wanting to go okay. they'll see it as better i like that so you you will you say that you were surviving in canada but in ghana you are living comfortably oh no <laughs> like that's not the case like so what is the case tell me i live i i lived a life in canada mm -hmm. i had i have a lot of crazy experiences mm -hmm. and good experiences mm -hmm. but it's well, my friends would agree with you, actually. My Canadian friends say, when I'm in Ghana, I'm living the best life. Mm -hmm. But when I come to Canada, the I'm cold, just... Uh, uh -huh. I, I, like, they don't get why when I come to Canada, I just like to just be chill and calm and quiet. Because when I'm in Canada, like, the basic things are what I... I like the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I tell them, can we go for a walk? <laughs> They're like, what's wrong with you? Like, I like the calm. I like the order. Mm -hmm. I like the quiet. I like all those things. Okay. But because in Ghana, everything's moving a mile a minute. You're not getting any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's good and bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay, then let's, let's just address it. What has been the challenges you, you face being on ground here in Ghana? It's good. You're very optimistic. You see opportunities. You, you are taking advantage of, of some that you can. But let's talk about the challenges, things that made you be like, oh, my God, I just want to go back to Canada. You know, just I, I know there are moments where you felt like maybe... I should just probably go back. Oh, Let's usually in your here's the thing for anybody who moves here, right. this this is the problem. Especially in the first year, if you make it past your first year, you'll most likely stay. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of the m issues people have is they are expecting their Western standards and comfort in a developing world. Mm. So the most basic things are what's gonna crack you, like. Oh, the electricity isn't yeah. as uh, stable. stable. It's not, but it's fairly stable compared to other places. Mm -hmm. The water, man, the water's not flowing. Like the even the roads, yeah. the potholes. <laughs> I mean, there's potholes in Canada, but yeah, like the yeah. the system. Like you can't just go somewhere and get good service. Mm -hmm. Like those, all those things will get to you mm -hmm. but is it enough to be like i want to go back everybody has a breaking point yeah where's your breaking point oh <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> because i think everybody have a limit you know where they're like okay maybe I, I should reconsider uh you know what i don't i don't know i feel like mm -hmm. The reason why I ask this question is, I think most people think of moving to uh, Ghana and they are going to experience like what they were experiencing in a developed nation like the U.S. or you, who have like been ahead of everybody like 400 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so, they don't think about that. Right. It's like they uh, a lot of people are expecting something when it's like, okay, mm -hmm. 
Ghana is has just been independent as long as segregation right. has been like, abolished in mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Like it's only that That's old. Not long ago at all. It's not long at all. And the people are just building up after hundreds of years of being colonized <clears throat> and like mentally enslaved. Mm. So everything is going to be a mess, wow. but people don't think about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and they think, oh, like you're independent. Yeah. So we're independent and we haven't done any decolonization mm -hmm. at all. So, okay. so Ghanaians still think white is right. Ghanaians still value you foreign. Into it. I've got ready. No, like we still do. Yeah, Ghanaians so still have that mindset. Mental slavery is still a thing here in Ghana and Africa. Oh, extremely. Unfortunately, wow. we haven't done anything to combat that. So, mm -hmm. like, there's a big struggle with with cultural acceptance mm. and foreign um, uh, thoughts. Everything foreign is good. Yeah. So, so like, even I know I have foreign privilege because. Right. I'm coming from Canada okay. and so I'm mindful of that I know of my privileges and I'm mindful of that and so even when I'm telling people move here like I'm still like okay move here but be aware that you're moving here but somebody who's here mm -hmm. who who in Canada would have been like you mm -hmm. doesn't have that same opportunity okay let me say this because the more problems we have here the more opportunities that are available right yeah so isn't that a, a good thing yeah, it, it's good and bad because um, a lot of people who are moving here are creating um, systems for other people moving here. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. creating an, the environment and the world for the other diasporans, mm -hmm. not for the locals. Look, okay. Like we're building okay. our uh, we're building bubbles and atmospheres like like this space. Like this is an amazing space. Wonderful, love it. Mm -hmm. You, you, a local, uh, the locals aren't coming here to, to <laughs> experience this. Arguably, okay. <laughs> like, like I, I love Jamestown Cafe. I love, yeah. I love the owners. They're mm -hmm. like the best. Mm -hmm. I love this street. Mm -hmm. But this is gentrified. Right. This whole street is gentrified. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean the local person that they, they, they cannot afford to, to go to Yeah, they're not places. experiencing this places like we are. Okay. So let's say they've called upon you. Porsche by the, the, the staff. <laughs> The office of the president. We want you to handle matters like this. How are you going to take take care of it? Oh, there's there's so <laughs> many ideas. There's so many things I want to do. I, I've spoken to some people. They mm -hmm. wanted me to get into politics. I say hell no. Yeah. I mean, well, we'll see about we'll that. See, yeah. But there's there's so many basic things that we could do to help mm. the everyday people. Mm. Like, first of all. Don't be charging import duties in dollars and then converting it to CDs so that it's a stable amount right. because all those things trickle down to the regular people. Okay, so you're more on, on big on the systems and how how it's, it's, it's you know, minimum wage increase. Mm. Like, okay. how, how are you going to be doing 13 CDs a day? Before we get political, <laughs> <laughs> you do have an NGO. Yeah. You know, you're doing great uh, for the community here. I want you to talk a little bit more about your NGO. And, uh, um, we take it from there. So, like, with all things, as somebody who came here and living the best life, mm -hmm. going to the fancy places, mm -hmm. enjoying it, like, uh, my Facebook, I have, I specifically curated my Facebook so that I would have a, a clear perspective of Ghana. Mm. So I have like almost 5,000 people on my account and okay. then like thousands of people following me. Wow. But the people that I like accepted were all types of Ghanaians, mm. like all types of views, all that. So then I happen to have some nurses on my okay. account, one from the Upper West region. And she would always post that like uh, this she works in the um, neonatal mm -hmm. ward in the Upper West in Jarapa and she would post like this baby has been detained it needs 200 cities this baby like this newborn uh, needs this like all these uh, posts wow. she was posting and and I started I, I kind of started it out of guilt um, I was like 
wow like mm -hmm. i just went to kozo and spent 600 cities wow. for nothing and there's like these two babies that are their mom is being detained and mm -hmm. they just needed 200 300 cities so then i started sending her the wow. money instead of like being lavish mm -hmm. for no reason mm -hmm. i mean there's only so much enjoyment you enjoy wow. and then you gotta like start doing other things so i started doing that and then i wanted to get the bottom of things like why are there so many of these babies being born that need that like have issues that need help and then i found out about peer poverty and how like it, it trickles down to just one teen girl who didn't have access to a pad who went to prostitute herself got pregnant mm and like it goes out and had a baby that's been abandoned mm -hmm. like she can't afford anything wow. and the hospitals here will detain you if you can't pay your bill really? yeah so then Until you pay you can never go yeah wow. so then and there's then a isn't it piling up if you're yes yeah. so wow. then there's like a trickle down so it's a whole issue mm -hmm. and then all to the point trickles down all the way to the girls coming to Accra to do Kaya like a lot of the girls and yeah the, the wow. headquarters are a product of somebody along the line somewhere who couldn't afford so, a, something like a pad mm. a period pad like wow. coming and it comes all the way so it's a huge cycle of poverty that can be just like ended with just one thing mm -hmm. so I started to so I created my NGO I I wanted to create the NGO years ago. When I came in 2015, I tried. It didn't work I, because I was a foreigner and whatever, and all this stuff happened. But so I did that this time. And yeah, it so I've, How yeah. old is it now? Now it's officially. Uh, what, what year are we in? Now 2023. we're in 20, <laughs> <laughs> we're 2023. Yeah. So I think in a few months, mm -hmm. it'll be two years old. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Happy to yes, adverse. Yeah. Now, how do you get sponsorship, or how do you? Are you doing it by yourself? Are you supporting these children and all this by yourself, or how do you get sponsorships? I started self-funding, mm -hmm. and then I crowdfunded, and then I transitioned. I've just been slowly transitioning okay. it. So then I transitioned it into like um, getting corporate sponsorship. Okay. And one of my uh, my last donation, even I do it every quarter, every three months, I donate. Oh, really? And uh, Kojo but uh, the Jamestown Cafe mm -hmm. owner, actually, uh, their Afro, their company, donated uh, 5,000 CDs oh, to wow. me. And they wanted to be my CSR, my corporate oh, wow. uh, nice. sponsors. And then um, another, a few other companies also donated. Okay. Um, uh, so you're open to donations? Sister. Oh, yeah. How do so people donate? Because I know my audience are very sensitive and they really care about matters like that. If they want to reach out and donate, how do they yeah, do that? Um, I have a... Y y I have all type PayPal, mm -hmm. mobile money, all this stuff. It's on my website, um, the Porsche. It's Porsche Ghana Foundation dot okay. com. So okay. my name. So you can put it there. P o r t i a g a n a Foundation dot org. O r g. Okay. okay, guys. I'm going to leave it in the description so it will be easier when you yeah. click it. You just go straight to that, and I also put it on the screen so you don't miss yeah. it. Now let's talk about the other businesses that you've you know, developed here in this nation and even the challenges. Talking about registering of companies, how was how it when you tried <laughs> registering your first company there? Well, the first time I tried to do all these things in 2015, it was very disastrous because I was not a Ghanaian. Mm. It's just now, 2019 is when I got a citizenship. Really? So, Congratulations. Yeah. Wow. So that's why I'm a dual citizen now. Wow. So. Wow. I got to get everything done. Mm -hmm. It was a bit chaotic when I tried before. Now, we have to test you. If you're a Ghanaian now, can you speak Chi? to make a Chi? Uh, excuse you. <laughs> is, is Chi the only language? I am ever. I am 100% ever. Okay, let's speak ever. You, you speak ever. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Ever to the world. Mr. Okay, okay, okay. That's certified. Excuse you. That's another thing that I have an issue with. Ghanaians mm -hmm. will be like, oh, you don't speak tree, you're yeah. not so, are you yeah. not Ghanaian? First of all, this we are in Ga land, Ga how many, how many soil. How many languages do we have there? We have, lot, right? we have 
nine main local languages, mm -hmm. but we have like a hundred wow. dialects and languages. Wow. But then the Ashantis, for some reason, mm -hmm. have a superiority complex that feel yeah. like you gotta speak tree or else you don't know our Before language. Before we get tribal. <laughs> no, it's not a, I think we should be inter, I think we need to be more mm -hmm. um, understanding, more um, of a melting pot, more mm -hmm instead of exclusionary because mm -hmm. it's that's an issue that like other people face mm -hmm. and i don't think it's okay okay i like i like your view though i like your view mm -hmm. let me ask you this um how what businesses are you really focused on right now and then what challenges that comes with that let's address that um directly you've, you've spoken a lot about that behind cameras but i want you to talk about <laughs> that to, uh, to the audience oh the challenges <laughs> Um, well, everywhere has challenges. Uh, here, one of the main challenges is em employees. Employees. Em I feel like, uh, I don't no, know how to say, say this. You beat that too laid back or no, you know, it, thick it's like when you're nice to your employees, they they don't respect you really wow it's it's really sad wow. because it's like the more mean you are to any of your staff the, the better respect. they work okay but when you're like nice to them then they wow. see you as your equal or like then they start then they start misbehaving wow. and then it's the complete opposite in canada like you want to in canada you want to work for somebody that is nice you mm -hmm. want to help develop someone's business but why do you think that is though um i think because in i think it goes back to the mm -hmm. whole when colonization thing mm -hmm. i think that's what it goes back to i think people are in survival mode they're in they're in this thought of like they because of like the master the whole master slave mm -hmm. kind of mentality mm -hmm. People, people don't even think of long-term building. Like, they don't think of stability. Like, hey, I've gotten this job. Let me um, secure this job. Let me think of a long-term, staying in this job long-term by helping develop this job. Mm -hmm. Like, let me help my boss be good. Let me help this business be good mm -hmm. so that I know that I can be in this job for 10, 20 years to come. They don't think like that wow. they think the day they've started what can i get in this day because i don't know if tomorrow i'll still be here mm. so that's why like somebody you'll see somebody has been begging for a job for months or years and the first day they've gotten a job they're stealing wow because is it not because of the you know hardship that was going on is it the attitude of the people or i want to because be it doesn't too. matter it doesn't matter from the poorest person to the richest person. Really? That's why even in our, our politicians are like that. Okay. Doesn't matter how rich they are, mm. what they've gotten in the office. They want to steal everything. They want to take what they can. Interesting. So I think it's just our mindset. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a real issue we have. I don't know how we're gonna um, fix that. Mm. I think, I think people don't uh, understand the power of of. Um, media and and marketing mm. like in canada canadians don't just wake up mm. being nice like i try to tell people like our cartoons like uh, we have commercials mm -hmm. that we watch that they show over and over like that are telling you like be good be nice be friendly like help others like we we are forced to volunteer mm. like vo you, you can't graduate high school unless you have a certain amount of volunteer hours yeah. like there, there's certain things that are mm. in great you, you don't you don't wake up being good or you don't wake up being bad are you trying to say it's the education system that we have yeah so there's we it is a thing that is ingrained in you mm. so we need to start doing that like we could have these little cartoons these little commercials showing people like how the system is like do this do that don't litter don't do this it is bad like all those things go a long to way to reprogram them yeah we okay. need we haven't okay. done any reprogramming we just right. expect people to be changed like just because and that will never work that's why even like, like 
in America, racism will never just vanish because you just said, okay, we've abolished it, so be good. No, you spent hundreds of years telling people they're not humans. And then the next day you're like, okay, they're human, so treat them that way. Yeah. That's the same thing with here. We spent 400 years telling people, the, like the Ghanaians, that they're not good enough to run things no. on their own. They're not good enough as people. Their religion is evil and their culture is bad. And then, okay, you're on your own and it's good. And then you're wondering, why do Ghanaians still think voodoo is an evil thing? Why do Ghanaians not accept their own culture? Why are Ghanaians like thinking whatever is foreign is good? Because you haven't done any reprogramming and they like still that. don't do reprogramming. I like that. So, so I think it's, it's, we are getting there. Right. With what? What I have mean, we done? <laughs> we are getting there. I mean, from the outside, you know, example, I was, I was in Ghana, let's like, say, 2017. And there was a lot of things that I, I experienced that was, um, it was worse, right? But now I came back in 2021, and then it looks like, okay, everything is falling back into place. So maybe we are getting there. I feel like I see in the younger generation, mm -hmm. they're kind of breaking those right. chains, but they're young. They don't control okay, so I guess things. something we should do now. We should do the we should do the reprogramming. Okay, how? Explain. Put the cartoons on TV. Uh, how do we do it? Yeah, put intentional. Uh, put funding into that. Mm -hmm. Into radio, mm -hmm. TV. Like as much as they pump into these. Um, what what are those Indian Bollywood things? Yeah. Uh, they should start. Is it Kunkumbagi, I heard. Yeah, those things. That should be a cartoon. Because and WhatsApp, Ghanaians love. Somehow, some random thing will get spread into the millions of people's WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. We should find a way to use that mm -hmm. to like send out these like viral bursts and messages mm -hmm. that will like intentional viral things about positive things to Ghana. It's mm -hmm. not, it shouldn't always be negative stuff that spread. Those who are listening, who have the <laughs> capacity to do things like this, please, please do it. Please do it. Let's 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 dive in a little bit about you know your life living here. Yeah. You know when it comes to even settling down. Uh huh. You've been doing all the businesses and stuff like that, right? Yeah. But let's talk about relationships. You know, I'm oh asking Lord. this because my people are going to literally they are going oh. to crucify me <laughs> if I don't ask you this question, right? Let's just put everything aside. <laughs> right? Someone said Ghanaian men are the most faithful men in the whole of West Africa. That was just some bullshit fake, <laughs> fake viral tweet. You oh, know, no. you know they were being sarcastic. Like my shirt is even says about sarcasm. You know they're being sarcastic. That was not, it's true. not true. That was really? not true at all. What do you mean? Oh. What do you mean? First of all, 80% of men that approach me are married oh, really? and lying about it really? that's, so that's the, so Give any scenario any man i meet now i think married until proven G single married. <laughs> yeah so the moment someone approaches me i instantly i don't even i'll be like there's, yeah there's someone who said that uh he met a married man they they jump into a whole relationship and then he never told her he's married and when he confronts she confronted him he said he was shy <laughs> you know what do you know what look every woman in ghana goes through that rite of passage mm. of accidentally dating a married man it's wow. a rite of passage just like some people will say getting arrested by the police is also a rite of passage you haven't you haven't become officially wow. ghanaian until you <laughs> 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 but but yeah like uh, that happened it's, to it's, me it's, that happened it's, um polygamy then because it looks like like African if you want to be general, polygamous just mm -hmm. be polygamous but that also goes into the mental slavery thing mm -hmm. they think that oh it's not okay but then at the same time mm -hmm. a lot of these men think or Ghanaian men think they have reached a level of success mm -hmm. when they have a wife and a girlfriend and a mistress okay. like really? like the more that mean that's like a success thing like like they deserve it yeah, but Ghanaian men will come for you. Oh, let, let, let them come. I have the receipts. Like, it's, man, I, I will tell you, yeah. I was having, 
in 2017, mm -hmm. man, that's and, this, and this is not the only, I have so many, Let's talk about but it already. in 2017, mm -hmm. I was literally having a conversation with my friend about how mm -hmm. uh, I don't like this whole thing about married men like i don't want to date any married man right. like this man met us while we were having this conversation because he was friends with the one guy that we're talking mm -hmm. to came in and joined in on this conversation and was like oh yeah yeah then he never wore a ring because apparently his ring fell off from the <laughs> first day he got married <laughs> this man didn't have a ring met me saying i don't want to date any married man and dated me. <laughs> Still dated me. Like, can you believe this? Oh and I don't even know how. The one thing that is always baffles me is how these married men make time. Because I was with this guy almost 24-7. Mm -hmm. So how do you have a whole wife, a whole relationship, and then be having a relationship? And never think because you've met their family mm -hmm. that that means anything. Because wow. girls... So, so they have advice for people watching. They, <laughs> the the mom. I met the mom. Like you meet you meet wow. the brothers. You meet the whole family, and they don't care. They help these people with their cheating because one, maybe the 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 parents don't like whoever they married, mm -hmm. and maybe they want them okay, to get okay, someone new, yeah. or they're like okay, or a lot of uh the older generation, mm -hmm. a lot of the women, they have become accustomed to like they were cheated on or their um spouses had mistresses right. so they they're just used to it, yeah probably. so they're just furthering that thing like mm -hmm. that's the norm like wow. they're okay with it so you can't be thinking like hey so what, what will you say some ladies should watch out when they are trying to date a Ghanaian man though because you've been on ground for a minute and with that scenario i think you have oh that's experience. just one of many <laughs> um, oh, tell me, i think not? i think <laughs> that i think I don't know as much as like for women as as it is for the men mm -hmm. like I think just be honest about what you want like let's be realistic be realistic if no, you no, want to be polygamous be if I tell you I want to be polygamous and I want to have a plus one are you going to look into my eyes and say okay sure let's do it no like I'm a very open person I I value honesty mm. it's not a matter of whether or not I want to be it's like I think second wife is too much pressure third wife is like the best maybe okay I think I think second wife you're competing with the like <laughs> the first, first wife. wife third wife you get to like come in and pick up the stock I don't know but these are like, see the things that and this is the funny things that we girls talk about because it's hilarious but I think a lot of people are more open mm -hmm. to polygamy mm -hmm. But it's about the deceit. Mm. Like guys will go around and some people want to be mistress. They don't want to really? be attached. Like I met this guy the other day and he was complaining about Ghanaian girls are wicked or evil mm -hmm. because he divorced his wife to marry his mistress and she broke up with him. And I when I asked him basic questions, it was so obvious to me that she didn't want to be a wife. She just liked being it like I have a little hidden relationship mm -hmm. on the side and then you try to make her a main thing wow. that's not okay so no like there's people who want to have little discreet relationships really? there's people who want to like be second wives mm -hmm. there's people who want just to be exclusive or okay. just themselves you have to find what you want like you there are people out there wow. just be open Guys, and just honest. Be honest okay just tell them listen i want you to be my sad thing you know what i'm saying my wife don't have to know about it then yeah okay okay no. lie to them right or let your wife know if you want to have multiple people okay, before no <laughs> before you marry somebody say what you want mm. so that the person and the person will be like okay, okay. let me ask you this right rate with all these experiences rate ghanaian on a scale of one to ten as compared to who? Everything. Because like, there's a difference. I mean, if I compare them to Nigerians, they'll the, be the whole oh. of West Africa. <laughs> um, well, my dating experience in West Africa is not that okay, vast. So, okay, let's just do Ghana and Nigeria. Ghana, uh, Nigeria, and then oh. Canadian, uh, Canadian. I mean, Canadian, Black Canadian. Ca Canadians are different. So, wow, elaborate. 
because now we have a strong theme here. We have Nigerian men who are watching right now. Oh, but they already to... know themselves. The Yoruba demons. Come on. Uh -huh. No, in 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 Canada. Yeah. A few of the people I dated were Nigerians. So, oh, okay. Lord, that was another. Them higher than Ghanaian men? Hell no. Okay. I mean, Ghanaian men are also the same. So we are on Ghanaian top of men the game, are is it? trying uh -huh. to outdo uh -huh. Nigerians as usual in all aspects. Even so we in are being, no, you're winning we in in being demons. Oh no. no. <laughs> 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 Guys, I if you take our relationship, we are going to finish here. <laughs> We I, do a part of our relationship. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's why, like, uh, when you ask any woman about relationships in Ghana, mm -hmm. they'll always be like, oh, this is going to be a long conversation. It's gonna be, it's gonna be. But I love it, though. I love it. My viewers, most people, I, I met a lady who left the U.S. to Ghana because he met a Ghanaian man. And then he moved to Ghana because of that. And then later on, the guy just cheated and, you know. Oh, but that's, she, yeah. That's, what that's so normal. That's normal. Like, don't you expect that? That's why never move to Ghana for somebody. I mean, you'll do it. I'm saying never do you it, know, but it people will do it. With the heart and to their heart, advice like that, it, it never works. Seem, yeah, you're you're blinded until after the breakup. Then you'll be like, man, I thought I should have known, yeah. but it is what it is. I think I I personally believe everything happens how it's supposed to happen, mm -hmm. and so like every experience no matter how crazy all these married men all these like mm -hmm. uh, people who are not ready for relationships or not up to par or whatever mm -hmm. that come after you it is uh you'll get to maneuver it mm -hmm. like yeah. I, I think right now in the in the dating scene mm -hmm. and in the world a lot of women are being more open more sexually like free and about and more promiscuous free? okay they're like okay. they they want to be more they want to have hookups more why not they, stands they want to have a roster of men one day this guy the hey, one day the other guy ride, but then the ride. guys are the ones who are being more like um more possessive and more like i want a single i want a girl alone i want i don't want to they they want you to yeah they they, they claim like the girls are doing more of what the guys say Used they're doing do. mm -hmm what they say we don't know if that's what they actually do okay. because they say yeah they want i will this day all this day this, this this and they claim they're doing all this but they don't want that same energy back and right now girls in their 20s and 30s are fully liberated are out there but i have a lot of friends women. I'm not gonna you know you <laughs> don't they, they like it in theory but then in reality when these girls are like Cause like a, a lot of my girlfriends, we have these conversations. Mm -hmm. Cause these guys will be like, uh, they start to give them attitude mm -hmm. when they start to like think, oh, is this? Are you going to this other person's place, mm -hmm. or are you this or this? Like they start to like say these things and mm -hmm. act a certain way that you'll be like, but I thought like, yeah, we're supposed to be just like having fun or mm -hmm. like what's going on mm -hmm. and do you know the funny thing is a lot of times when girls want to have a conversation with a guy like what are we the guy thinks it's because they want to have a relationship it's like no the girl wants to know she wants to make sure that okay we are there's we are th like they want to define what it is so, so we can go on another date with this person the next really? day like is that why you guys ask that yes yeah, so if we want to wow. be sure because <laughs> we're like we know the guy a b and c is hauling at us uh let me check to be sure like this is not this is just like casual wow. this isn't going anywhere because wow. they don't want to go and like they don't want to give all these really? other people and have issues with this guy but guys think the opposite and they'll start being like oh wow i'm like really I didn't know that i've learned something new yeah well, let me ask you this are you open to dating though if you have you're not already dating oh i'm open like okay. I'm guys i'm going to leave <laughs> the instagram on the screen no Men, please slide no, into please. the DMs. I already have too many, too many people really? in my DMs. I, I, people, some people think I'm a lesbian because I really? curve a lot of guys. Really? Like, I know a lot of guys, like, mm -hmm. a lot of guys mm -hmm. holler and I, it's, I turn them down. Maybe the Mr. Wright is in it, it's now coming, you don't know. Maybe. Maybe. What's your Instagram? It's uh, Miss underscore Ghana. So M-I-S-S -S underscore G-A-N-A. 
Okay, I love that. We've had so much amazing conversation so far. Yeah. My favorite one is the relationship. <laughs> of I can't course wait, it is. I can't wait for us to do a part two. Yeah. Now, we are almost ending the conversation though. We, we spoke about you transitioning to Ghana and the uh -huh. difficulties, the challenges. If people are watching right now, will you be like, say, I can advise someone to move back? You know, you, you've been doing that to most of your Canadians. Will you still do that to, you know, uh, to tell people to move back? Will you still do that? Based yeah. on what you've seen so far. Yeah, I think people should still move back here. Like, there's a lot going on. I, I think you have a m more room to break the ceiling here than you do in the Western world. Mm. Like, you will always be, especially if you are black, you will always have a, a wall that you will hit that only a small select few can break through over there. Whereas here, the sky's the limit. And here, you, you have the blueprint for anything and everything you can get into and use your knowledge from where you're at to do better. I like that. I like that. We are almost at the end of the conversation. You are amazing. Okay. Thank you. You are amazing. I love, I love talking to you. I wish we can have a, one more hour in yeah. <laughs> our relationship. But we have to end the show now. If you do have a last, last message to those people watching, what would that message be? If you've not already given that. I would say lower your expectations and just enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. I think you should come with an open mind if you're coming here. Come with an open mind and don't try so hard and lower your expectations. Like, um, don't try so hard to recreate the life that you had wherever you're coming from. Think about things in terms of where you're moving to. Mm. So just keep that in mind and you'll be able to build a great life for yourself. Okay, I like that. Thank you so much for talking to me. I think we should do a part two. Are you sure. Done? Okay. Why not? Guys, if you did enjoy the episode, please, she is Portia. All her social media would be on the screen. She also have an NGO which is doing so much great things for the community here in Ghana. The link would be in the description. If you want to speak with her personally, uh, both business and private uh, information will be on the screen and in the description. The guys who, are want, who want to slide in the DMs, you know where to go. And uh, yeah. <laughs> So much, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah, let's say bye bye to them. Bye. Bye.